This is Josephine Gibbs reading William Shakespeare's sonnet number 29. When, in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state, and trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries, and look upon myself and curse my fate, wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, desiring this man's art and that man's scope with what I most enjoy contented least. Yet in these thoughts myself almost despising, haply I think on thee and then my state, like the lark at break of day arising, from sullen earth sing hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings that when I scorn to change my state with kings. So in this sonnet, it's slightly much more hopeful and positive compared to sonnet 28, which is very depressing. And in this sonnet, it basically shows us that when I'm in disgrace, this is what the first few lines are saying when I'm in disgrace with everyone and when I'm out of luck I sit all alone and cry with self pity and bother God with useless cries which fall on deaf ears and I look at myself and curse my destiny wishing that I had more to hope for wishing I had those wealthy men's assets and friends this month's skills and that man's opportunities and totally dissatisfied with things I usually enjoy the most Yet I'm thinking these thoughts and almost hating myself. I happen to think about you and then my condition improves. Like a lark at daybreak, rising up and leaving the earth far behind to sing hymns to God. In the last couplet, for when I remember your sweet love, I feel so wealthy that I'd refuse to change places even with kings. Our poet expressed that even just the memory of that love, he would never swap situations with very powerful people like kings. The strongest literary device here is imagery wherein the author uses words and phrases like um, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, desiring his man's art and that man's scope. So the poet here felt very discontented with his lot and covet, covet other people's possessions. So the authorial introductions also is used here in the last play, which is a literary device that is used by the author to say exactly what he thought at the point of emphasis. As in, happily I think on thee and then my state, that when I scorn to change my state with kings. This is when he begins to realize that he, he has much more greater wealth than other people. Uh, analogy is also used here as a literary device that helps establish relationship which is based on similarities. As in, for thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings. The poet established the value of that love being more precious than all worldly possessions of other men. Personification also occurs here in the attribution of human-like qualities to inanimate things as in the lark at day, at break of day arising from solemn earth sings hymns at heaven's gate. The simple uplifting thought of his beloved is likened to sung prayers that reaches the very gates of what could be no higher than heaven itself. A simile is quite incredibly poetic in the way that the author likens something to another thing, as in the lark, the lark of break of day arising from sullen earth and wishing me like to one more rich in hope. Here the poet is conveying the grandness of simply the act of thinking of his beloved gives him wings to greet a new day. Or another way of saying more hope is given to him by the beloved's memory alone. So this is incredibly uh, positive and Yes, more inspiring to us reader um, compared to previous um, sonnets. So sonnet 20, this is sonnet 29, interpretation analysis in terms of the use of literary devices. I hope you have gained something from this and listening to this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you so much and take care.